So here we are. These are back together. All I've done with these is deal to their film advance problems. And so basically my challenge here was reassembling the film advance. And I figured out a way to do that which was reasonably convenient, um, at least as convenient as these things ever are. And uh, one of them gave me a lot of fight. This one, I think, just because of the way the spring was wound, it wanted to fly to pieces. It was very difficult to get that back together. But I've got a method that works quite well. Now, with that part of the job out of the way, and I'll show you how to reassemble that bit later, these things need to be stripped down and have the shutter serviced because the shutter is no good. This one, the Super, the shutter worked reasonably well on the fastest speeds, but on the slow speeds it has a tendency to stick open. And uh, you don't want that. So it's going to have to come apart regardless. It's made here, the Pronto, That actually works reasonably well. There's not really much wrong you can say about that shutter. But I've got a stand-in for it. Here's another one with a Pronto. This one is missing the top of its film advance. Surprise, surprise. But the shutter does show signs of being a problem. It runs slow. So we'll use this one as the subject for how you deal with the shutter. A Pronto shutter on one of these simple pack set. This is a pack set one. And it would be the same deal basically whether it's a knob advance or a lever advance like this one is without its lever. So we'll start here. We're going to need into this camera Looking at the front plate, it appears that the front plate fits completely over the front. It's not tucked up under the top plate by the looks of it. We'll find out. Let's remove the camera back. And here we have four screws that hold the shutter to the camera body. Two of the screws are hidden here under that um, shaft. So to get at those we've got to remove this. And to remove this we've got to remove the base. So we'll start there. That's obviously loose because that popped out. It may just be bent of course. Three screws, just checking that they're all the same length. No, they're not. The single screw was longer than its mates. That can come off. Now, here, there's a little bush that'll hopefully come out. It's got a spring inside it, you've got to be very careful not to lose that. Our shaft may come out of the sprocket if we're lucky. I'm going to remove the top cover. So let's start by removing our film advance knob here. I'll lift that gear out. The rewind over here 
how are we going to deal with this? I think if I put something through the fork, that screw might come out. It does. And lift the knob off. Okay. That's fine. That should stay in with the top plate, I think. I don't think we need to remove that. The top plate, we've got three screws. See if that'll lift off for us. It's not showing much interest in lifting off. I don't know whether there's a screw under here. Take the shoe off. No, it's still going nowhere. There's an alignment pin through the body at that end, and that may well be holding us up. There's a seal here, it's um, black yarn, it's probably glued in position and that glue may well be gluing everything in place. Yeah, it's coming apart. The tearing sound is certainly the sound of that yarn giving way. Yeah, so the yarn glued onto that body edge was what was gluing that thing in place. So, here's our top cover anyway, let's have a look at that. So we've just got the frame counter there. Uh, simple glass for the finder. Here is the extinction meter. There's not much to that, it's just the film with the numbers on it at the front. They don't even have a cover glass over that. It's pretty crude. Let's pop that to one side. Right, we can see that the works here for the shutter cocking action. Here is the shaft that gets pulled across by the film advance mechanism. And in this case it's held down with a bracket here, two screws. You'll find that these models will vary in their features. Let's take this plate off. Here's the arm. And there's its return spring here. We'll unhook that. Might take that screw out in order to remove that. Okay, so that couples with this gear, 
So it's got a little rack here that couples with this gear to pull that shaft forward to cock the shutter. And that shutter is very sticky. So that would cock in that position. It would roll back under its spring tension but can only go back this far. It's now stopped by the shutter and when you release the shutter that releases this and allows this to come back which would allow this to come back from its block position back to its start position so it can be cocked again. Okay, so that part's simple enough. Now here is the shaft for the uh, sprocket and we want this out. It's got a pin through it. It looks like a tension pin. And that collar, is there anything holding that collar in place? No, it's just sitting on that tension pin basically. Well, I think that tension pin is going to have to come out. That's it there. Okay, it's going to need a very small punch to deal with that. Let's see if it'll move. I can't honestly tell whether it's moving or not. Just looking for another punch in my selection of punches that I'm willing to sacrifice for a good cause. It might have moved. I'll put that bush back in there to support that, I think. Which will make it easier to uh, extract that, drive that pin out if it's supported. Well, that's the answer, that's moving there. If I rotate that, can I get that pin out? Okay. Yeah, this is what I'm wanting to do is pull that pin around to the front. Here it is. Lift it out without any trouble. Okay, now can we free that shaft up? Should push out through the bottom and it does. It's a little bit rusty, it's probably why it's reluctant to come out. Well with that pushed out we can now slide this out and expose those two screws. Okay.
enough at this stage. Take note that we've got four screws and they are not all the same length. Okay, let's have a look at the length of these screws. Those two are the same length. This one here is shorter and it's mate is the same length by the looks of that. So two short screws over here and you may find that you end up with three different sizes depending on your camera. Save those off. Now I think the shutter will lift straight off the front. It does. This spring, well that came off there. It looks like its sole purpose in life is to hold this baffle back in place. There's not much left in here. But here is the shutter. Okay. So it looks like the shutter fits into the front casting of this camera. The shutter will be built into the front casting of some others. There's a retaining ring here. Let's undo that and see where we go from there. Here's a retaining ring spanner I made for doing retinettes. It's no use in this case because it's not wide enough and the tangs are too, too wide, they won't fit in the slots. But I've got this tool that I made a long time ago for some other camera and you can see it's just got machined or milled out pieces at the end there. So it's got a very narrow tang on it. I think that'll fit. Yeah, it does. That wasn't even tight. Let's just spin this off. Well, that's a very deep collar. And what does it hold in place? The whole shutter? Yes. So in this case it's holding the whole shutter in place. And we're just left with this body here. You can see that. There's a lot of sand and rubbish in here. Well that would go along with the filth that we found in the top of the camera. Let's just sweep some of this dust to one side. Have a look at our shutter. That rear lens that's retained with a collar in here. We can leave that in place probably and clean it in place. You can see that the shutter body here is covered in filth. Now there's, there's a piece of tape or something here. Presumably covering a port in that shutter that wasn't required. 
we're going to have to replace that because that's that's loose and this is all dusty and filthy anyway so there is our shutter from the front we want to start taking this thing apart now the front lens element here will have three screws around the outside of the focus scale ring which will engage with the front element now I'll be setting the focus on this thing later so I'm not overly concerned about its position but if you were wanting to try and somehow cheat and not focus the thing later you might make a mark here let's just say we put a mark on our ring there and one on the cone of the lens there and if we put things back in the same place everything will be the same right let's get these three screws out sometimes these are very tight usually they're not these ones are good that front ring lifts off now I can see the mark that I made here on that lens cone so basically this might be a multi-start thread for all I know so we need to make sure we get our lens back in the same position uh, when we reassemble things if we're doing it that way so first thing I'm going to do we need a reference point so I want to see how far I have to turn this until it bottoms out in the it, it's bottomed out at that point so we know if we reassemble the lens and there's our mark and we bot it bottoms out down here somewhere then we know that we started the lens in the right position and then all we've got to do is line up our mark here and our mark here and all will be good so I'll remove this front lens element this is quite stiff because the grease is dried out and there's any amount of filth in there too dust that's accumulated let's look at the rest of this so the central element here is down inside that lens tube it's held in with a retainer and I don't think we need to take it out I think we can clean that in place when we've got the shutter disassembled it's a little bit more awkward when you're doing it that way but it's not impossible and sometimes it's easier than removing the glass and put it and then trying to get it back in this case that that screws in it'll probably come out in one piece without any problem with some cameras and I'm thinking here of the Kodak Retinette the central group is often glued into the mount so you can see I'll just back that screw off to get the flat face round so it's not blocking our retaining ring and this retaining ring I want to unscrew now and I can tell you that, that is exceptionally reluctant I'm pushing on that with a wooden toothpick and the wooden toothpick says no I'm going to need something a bit stronger than that but I don't want to use a metal tool because then I'll end up damaging stuff so I'm just going to go and find a, uh, a bamboo skewer I'll put a few drops of naphtha around that retaining ring now let that percolate in there if I wasn't committed to opening the shutter up before I am now because you don't want things running down inside shutters let's see if it'll move it is exceptionally reluctant now years ago when I worked with Kodak we had a tool that would engage with those notches all at once um, and that would be marvellous to do to use something like that but of course I haven't got one and I haven't got a great deal of enthusiasm to uh, go through all the processes of trying to work out the engineering of that since I don't have a big machine shop to call on let's see what else we can do Yeah. 
See, it's moving, but it's, a, it's reluctant. So what I used there was some very stiff tweezers to span it. I think another go of solvent might be the answer with this shutter. Now it is turning. <laughs> well, that's stuff. I'm going to try um, a bit of acetone. Okay, let's have a, another go. That really does not want to move. We'll work it backwards and forwards will it go. I'm going to need a better tool than this obviously. These rings are very very Thin. They distort very easily. So if you're pulling and pushing at them, they're probably going out around. And as a result, they're very tight on the thread. It's only moving a few degrees at each time. Okay, we're on the move. It feels very tight. Um, Sure, why should it be so tight on that thread? All right. A few more drops of naphtha and I'll continue. catching on that screw head again there. Must have knocked that with my tweezers. Wow, oh, that's tight. Well, you can probably hear that grating sound. That's just the thread. See, this ring is very fine. It's only, you know, two threads deep, something like that. But they distort easily. So when you're pushing and poking at them, 
they're going out of round making it harder to get them off. Well the front piece should come off now. Let's get this apart. So this piece here, underneath this we've got the shutter speed settings cam plate and there's this plate in between. Now this is all very filthy so this is a great example of why you need to take things apart. This is full of sand and rubbish. That it worked at all was amazing. Okay, let's have a look at the shutter. 